Hey, okay, how's everybody doing? My name is Rhonda. I'm Assistant Director of Georgia Northwestern Financial Aid Office. We're going to talk a little bit about loans today. Loans are great if you need them. They can be bad if you don't. Um, we would never discourage a student from taking a student loan, but we just want you to be smart about it. I'm um, going to give you a little history lesson. Last year, um, based on the quarter system, if you were eligible for HOPE, you had $35 technology fee and your book cost over the $100 allotment was the only out-of-pocket expense you had. If you were eligible for full pale, this was the amount left over after the technology fee was paid. You could use part of that in the bookstore. Okay? Now, fast forward to this year, under the semester system, if you're eligible for HOPE, your total out-of-pocket expense for full-time, which is 15 hours or more, would be $337.75. The Pell amount is up to $18.50 for semesters. The difference is because quarter divided by four, semester divided by three. That's the increase in the Pell amount. They take the $337.75 out of that, you've still got $1,500 where you can use half of that in the bookstore. So you may or may not need a student loan. It's just something to think about. The difference, you're still coming out better, even under the semester system, you're going to have more money in your pocket. Under the quarter system, Pell is split into fours because we're four quarters, okay? Under the semester system, it's divided by three for three semesters. We have fall, spring, and summer. Not eligible for HOPE, but you're eligible for Pell. Total fees, full-time, 15 hours or more. Tuition and fees is $12.49. If you're eligible for full Pell, your full Pell amount is the $18.50. You have enough to cover your tuition and fees. You may need a little bit of a student loan to help you out because you're only going to have about $600 roughly left over to help with books. So you may say, okay, I do need a little bit of a student loan. That's fine. If you do not have Hope Repel, this is going to be your total out-of-pocket cost for tuition and fees plus your books. So you may need a little bit more of a loan than somebody who only has Pell or only has HOPE. Like I said earlier, we're not telling you not to take out a student loan. We're just telling you to just take out what you need. Okay? Okay. Some questions to ask yourself when you go home tonight, you're going to take this student loan application home with you and you're going to be sitting there and you're going to say, do I really want to do this? Okay, yeah, I really want to do it. How much do I need? You're going to look at the hope you receive, the pay you receive, if any. You're going to look at your tuition. You're going to look at your fees. You're going to look at your book cost. See what you have left over. Then you're going to come up with a dollar figure, and you're going to say, I think I really need to do $500 a semester for the next year. And that's fine. You fill it out, you put that on your application, next week you turn your financial aid, your loan application into financial aid. We'll process it, go from there. If you want to wait, you do not have to turn this application in Monday. The earliest we're telling students to accept, you know, to turn them in is August 1st. You do not have to turn it in August 1st. If you want to wait till classes start, and I had some students tell me last night they were going to, thinking they were going to do this. Wait till classes start for fall. See how their financial aid plays out. See how their hope does, because with all the changes, you know, for hope taking place fall. See what hope pays. See what Pell pays. See what they have left over. Then you can apply for a student loan if you still need it. You can apply for a student loan any time during the semester. It does not have to be done at the beginning. It doesn't have to be done before it starts. You can do it any time. So think about it. Be smart about it. And think about the work study program. It's a federally funded program. You actually earn money. You work, you earn wages. Therefore, you don't pay it back because you worked and earned that money. It's nothing you pay back. Yes, ma'am. Yes. You go to three, five. We have some applications with us today. Um, we place students, most of our positions are on campus. We do have a few off-campus positions we're trying to set up. Um, you work in different areas like testing, library, bookstore, you know, just some instructors want work studies, you know, just different areas. And um, for summer term, students were only allowed to work 12 hours a week, but we're hoping for fall to raise it to 15 hours a week. 
The rate of pay is $8 an hour. So that may be something you want to consider doing instead of a student loan. If that would be enough to supplement what you need. If you think you're interested in work study programs, say financial aid, they have the applications and we won't place anybody till fall semester starts. But you can go ahead and get your name in the hat and get, you know, go from there. Okay? Um, work study. This last one right here, very important. After careful analysis, do I need this loan? One reason we're stressing, do I need this loan? And be careful is if we have a 30% default rate for three years in a row, we lose all federal aid. So that means three years from now, four years from now, if we have 100 people take out a student loan, 30% of them decide they don't want to pay, our students three and four years from now can't get any federal aid at all. So that's why we're telling you, be smart about it. Think about it. Be careful. Only take what you need because you do pay it back. Dependent students are eligible for up to $6,500 a year. Independent students are eligible for up to $10,500 a year. That's scary. That's scary. $10,500 a year at 7.2% interest. Wow. Your minimum payment would be three or $400 a month on that. See why we say only take what you need, not what they offer you. Okay? Any questions at this point? Hmm? No. Credit rating is not a consideration for a student loan. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about um, processing time for the student loan. You've took it home, you've thought about it, you've filled it out, you've brought it back. Perfect world, we're hoping to process these in two to three weeks. But keep in mind, right now there's two people for Georgia Northwestern trained to do student loan processing. Yeah, we're going to be processing loans and training at the same time. So you'll have to be patient with us. We're learning. This is new for us just like it's new for you. We're not going to know all the answers. And I'll be the first one to tell you if you ask me a question. If I don't know, I'll tell you I don't know, but I'll find out. Because I'm not going to tell you wrong. I'd rather tell you I don't know the answer to something than to give you a wrong answer. But I will research it. I have a list over here that I've been getting of questions already to research. Yes, ma'am. Um, right now, the deadline is August 12th. That's set by, uh, not us. <laughs> we don't set those. Um, student loan doesn't go through until after that. I mean, we're going to keep that in our classes, right? That's what I'm asking. We hope not. Our goal is to have everybody that does a student loan application somehow noted in the system that we're processing their loan please don't drop these people, okay? I mean, we're going to do due diligence and have everybody processed as quick as possible. Right. Um, your... Yeah, yeah, I mean, but we're hoping to be able to note it somehow in the system so the appropriate departments will know what's going on. They'll know that Sally has applied for a student loan. She's went through first process. She's working on the second one. Okay, so you're going to be looking when you come up with your dollar figure. You're going to look at what you need fall, what you need spring, what you need next summer. You're going to add that together, put that total amount on there, then we'll divide it by three. It will be dispersed once a semester. Okay, they will not be dispersed until about, well, they will not be paid until 28 to 30 days after classes start. Paid to you. Okay, we will have it. You know how pale is is authorized in the system so the bookstore can see it, you can use it there, the business office sees it so they don't drop you from your classes. The loans will be authorized the same way in the system. They will be able to see you have it so they'll know what money you have. You just will not actually receive your refund 
until about 30 days later. Okay. What in one check? No, it'd be one check per semester. Now let's talk a little about repayment right quick. There's three things that determine when you have to repay your student loan. Number one, of course, is when you graduate. Number two is when you just decide you don't want to come to school anymore. And number three is if you drop below six semester hours in a semester. You have to be enrolled in six semester hours, which is half time, to be eligible for a student loan. If you drop below that, you drop below your six hours, you quit attending classes, or you graduate. Six months from that date, you have to start repaying your student loan. Yes? If you're actively enrolled in school or you have special circumstances, yeah, that would be between you and the lender. I know you can do deferments, but I think they have to be different circumstances determine if you're eligible for a deferment, okay, or forbearance or, you know, which, I mean, they still do have those options. What the actual requirements are to do that, I'm not sure because that's between the student and the lender. Yeah. 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 They, and they do have the criteria for those. And you know, if you meet the criteria, definitely talk to your lender. If I mean, if you if you go into repayment and you're having problems, definitely talk to your lender. They're willing to work with you to do anything. They don't want you to default on a student loan. They don't want that. Um, also, when you drop below six hours, quit attending or graduate. You have to do an exit, exit counseling that will be done online. So if you, one of those three events take place, please come by financial aid and just let them know. Just say, hey, you know, I'm going to have to drop this semester. I'm not going to be coming back. Um, so we can get you in line to do that exit counseling because if you don't and you want to come back at a later date, you will not get another student loan because you didn't do the exit counseling on the first one.